Vapor pressure using the Clausius Clapeyron equation. Pentane gas can be used to make styrofoam. And the normal boiling point of pentane, they're telling us a piece of information. If I'm talking about the normal boiling point, 36 degrees Celsius, well, I better add something to that and turn it into Kelvin. So that would be 309 Kelvin. It's vapor pressure at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, I better take that, 25 degrees Celsius. Turn that into Kelvin. And that's gonna be 298 Kelvin. And they said at this one, its pressure is 505 Tor. And then they ask, what is the heat of vaporization of pentane? We'll call this case one and this case two. Okay. Well, if this is case two, then it says I should put this down here, okay? And then I would be saying delta H vaporization over R, one over and one over. What's supposed to go here? The boiling point happens when the pressure is the same as normal atmospheric pressure. Oh, so this should be 760 torr. Okay, I'll put the 760 here. Now you'll notice I didn't even bother to write the tor because both the, the tor divided by tor, the tors are gonna cancel each other out. So this will be unitless, which is good because I can't take a logarithm of something that has units. It needs to be a plain number. Which R should I use? Well, vapor pressure should be given in kilojoules per mole. I have an R that I could use. I don't want to use the one that's liter atmospheres. That will not work. I want to use the one that has joules per mole. And then the Kelvin shows up because the Kelvin needs to cancel out these guys because they're in Kelvin. That way this will be joules per mole. I'll get my answer here in joules per mole and then I can convert it a little bit. This is now going to be the 8.314 and that will be joules per mole. That means I have numbers everywhere except there. I will rearrange this whole formula to get this by itself. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that on many calculators, there's a button like this. That's a very useful button because I will be able to put this whole thing in very easily. I can put in 298, press this button and then say I'm going to subtract 309 with this, and I will end up with what this number is down below. So now that we've written down that it's 1.1946 times 10 to the negative four, we can put in the rest of what we know up here. So instead of the R, we'll put the 8.314, which had units, joule and mole, and the Kelvin is going to disappear because it cancels with the Kelvin that's here. When we do the logarithm of 760 over 505, we get this number. Okay, now we're just multiply, divide, and we're going to get this. That's gonna be in joules per mole. But I said usually these things are written as kilojoules per mole when we're talking about delta H of vaporization. Enthalpy of vaporization is usually written in kilojoules. Well, what does kilo mean? It means 10 to the third. So if we think about that, and we remember that we needed to take this back to three sig figs, we would end up saying that this was 28.4 kilojoules per mole. And we are finally done with the problem.